It's John, a.k.a. Smelly Telly, and it's another fantastically beautiful spring day here in Evansville, Indiana, and more music and moreguitars.com. Pretty exciting day for me because I get to demo and talk about this lovely guitar here. This is the Gretsch Broadcaster Jr., part of the Gretsch uh, Broadcaster family. This is exciting because this is not just a new model to me, but uh, we're Gretsch dealers now, so this is pretty cool. You're gonna be seeing Gretsch videos through the next few weeks, and uh, this is the one that I get to do. So this is the Broadcaster Junior. So if you're new to Gretsch, like I'm kinda of somewhat new to Gretsch, there is an S when you try to spell Gretsch. I found that out today, so um, of course you can see that right there. But let's go through some of the specs on this guitar, and then we'll talk about how it plays and we'll go through some sounds and uh, hopefully we'll all learn something together. This is a really cool guitar. Spec wise, it's kind of a marriage of tradition then also kind of modern playability. We'll start with the tuners for instance. Uh, from the front, it just looks like classic good old tuners, right? But really these are Goto locking tuners, which is a fantastic upgrade. Uh, locking tuners should just be they should be on everything these days, unless of course it is like a, a replica guitar. Laminated maple, sides, back, top. Uh, but ebony fretboard is what I was trying to say. Ebony fretboard, you know, medium jumbo frets and bound fretboard, you'll see pictures as we go through it. The neck is, I would say it's a comfortable, it's, it's not thin, but it's definitely not a thick neck either. It's a, it's a comfortable C. It feels very familiar to me, um, the style of, of guitars that I like to play. We get to the neck joint, and this is another thing that I read when I was reading up on this. They actually lowered where the neck meets the body here at the neck joint, so it allows for easier access to the upper frets, which you can see I'm getting to the very highest fret without any problems at all. I don't have an experience with many Gretsch guitars, but I will say that for a lot of them, once you get up to the neck joint, it is a little bit harder to reach those upper frets, but this one, you can, it's, it's all good to go. We get to the body, what I already said was a laminated maple all around. Uh, you have basically a three-way selector for the Fultron pickups, so think Filtertron, but they call them Fultron. Uh, Larry and I noticed that they put out some oomph, which we'll hear uh, when I do some more playing demos. This is the master volume. Uh, you find these on um, a lot of Gretsch's. And at first it seems a little bit funny, but when I was playing around with it, I actually think it's kind of fantastic. And we'll, I'll show you some of that here in a little bit as well. Uh, it's got a Bigsby on it, you know, and Bigsby there again, I've said this before, some people love them, some people don't love them. It's a Gretsch. You kind of almost expect to see one of these on there. Silver hardware. Uh, you have uh, two volume controls and then the tone control. And the interesting thing with the tone control is that it is a low, or sorry, no load pot on there. So that means when the tone control is all the way up, there's basically no tone control. It's taking the tone control all the way out of the circuit. So, and we'll play around with that a little bit as well. Uh, it is a stunning guitar. You'll see in the pictures. It is extremely comfortable to play. I have enjoyed playing it thoroughly. Uh, I don't think that this guitar will probably be here for very long just because of the coolness factor and how well it plays. Uh, I think probably Larry would agree with me that uh, it's a pretty outstanding guitar. As a matter of fact, I don't want to spoil it, but everything that we've gotten from Gretsch so far has been incredible from their budget friendly all the way up to the kind of upper end. Everybody is fairly blown away. The sales people are pretty stoked about it and you should be stoked about it too because that's that's great, you know, to be able to say that, that every single one that's come in has been fantastic. Let's do some sounds, how about? All right, so I'm gonna turn the master all the way up. We're on the bridge pickup and we were on the clean channel.
fact, why don't we do this? I'm just gonna run through the three pickups just real quick, side by side, and then we can go in a little bit tweaking. So let's play around with this tone control. Like I said, it's a no load tone control, or basically the pot. So right now, basically, it's like it's not even there, right? And you can hear just by moving it just a little bit, it darkens up. And that's, of course, with it all the way down. Does anybody else wonder why exactly we need to have that setting on tone controls? Is anybody using that? If you are, comment. Make a comment. Let me know. All right. So the master volume, this is what I like about it. And Larry told me that it actually has the bleed circuit in it. So, and that's a big part of it. What that means is when I turn the volume down, it doesn't lose its clarity. loses volume. <laughs> but you can hear that high end is still there, which is pretty awesome. And then of course you can't hear anything. Nothing. Okay. Let's go to the middle position for a bit. Play around. Very sweet. You know, one thing I didn't mention, so this is a semi hollow body guitar. I probably should have said this from the top, which means it has a center block in it. And for most of us, it just means that you can play this with some volume and it's not going to give you that kind of shrieking feedback you would get from a fully hollow body um, electric guitar. They make models like that and we'll be covering those as well. But this one has a tonal block made out of spruce. And if I read this correctly, they chose that specifically because they liked the sound properties of, of Spruce center block in this guitar. So they know what they're doing. They've been making guitars for a while. That said, let's throw on some gain, see how it sounds. I'm trying to reach it. Yeah, there we go. All right. So of course, Gretsch, most of the time we think people like Brian Setzer and uh, Reverend Horton, and then of course, um, oh, people like uh, Chess Chad Atkins. I couldn't remember his name. People like Chad Atkins. Golly, what's the matter with me? Lester and Chester. Come on, man. Anyway, um, but there's also guys like Malcolm Young. Now, is this going to be anything like what he played? Not really. But can you rock on it? I don't know. Let's find out.
Pretty good. So yeah, actually it does sound pretty good with some gain. All right, let's do the entire Megadeth Rust in Peace album starting right now. I'm just kidding. You're probably not gonna play that on this guitar, but you know what? Maybe sometime we could have Ed come in and we could have him plug into one of his mess of boogies and see how heavy he can get with it. That's not really my thing, though I do appreciate it all. Okay, so this pretty fantastic guitar. It's been, this is the honestly been the highlight of a day for me that has been very trying. So that's good from here. It's all going up. If you have any questions about this guitar, if you want to know more about Gretsch and the models that we've got in stock, you of course call down here, talk to our lovely sales associates, or you can get on our website at moreguitars.com. You can ask questions in the comment se section. We'll try to get back with you, you know, when we have time. Um, this is pretty cool. I'm excited about this. This is a guitar line that I have always, always been somewhat fascinated with. A lot of my favorite players play them. So I'm looking forward to doing a lot more gear demo on these. My name is John. You can call me Smelly. Thank you so much for hanging out. We appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.